All right, good morning. Let's get started in this beautiful morning. Um, as you know, Pastor Sandro's not here this morning, so you have his replacement. So bear with me, please. Um, I'm not much to look at, I know, but we're here for the Word of God and not for anybody else. So let's get started with some songs. I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. I'm on my way to heaven, shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven, shouting victory. Once I was a sinner, now in victory. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. I've been changed. I've been delivered. I've been changed. I've been reborn. All my life has been rearranged. What a difference it's made since the Lord came in to stay. In my heart, oh yes, I've been changed. I've been changed. I've been reborn. All my life has been rearranged. What a difference it has made since the Lord came in to stay. It's in my life, oh yes, I've been changed. Amen. Uh, let's keep it going with Jesus on the inside. Uh, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change. change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a wonderful change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a wonderful change in life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a wonderful change, change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a wonderful change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change in my life. Amen. How, how many know that we really want that, that change in our life, you know? And only Jesus can give us that change. Now we're going to get the band together. And make some music. If the band get ready, let's see. We're going to sing I Surrender. Singing you this 
I count it all as loss for the sake of knowing you, for glory of your name, to know the lasting joy, even sharing in your pain. And I How many can surrender this evening? Yes. Oh, Father God, we surrender, Father Lord, to your word, to your mercy, Father God. We thank you, Father Lord, for all the grand things that you do in our lives, Father God. Okay. Thank you. We want to thank the musicians that are not here. <laughs> so, uh, We'll continue this morning with our morning announcements. Um, we have Sunday morning service at 10.30, Sunday, morning, Sunday evening service at 6.30. That's our Bible study. Uh, tonight we're having a tasting, tasting night, movie night. Uh, we're watching a documentary about what uh, the end of times, what is going on. If you have been watching us, you know that we've been watching the series of uh, end of times with a pastor from El Paso. So we'll be watching the documentary tonight. And uh, coming up at the end of the month, we have a healing crusade in, in Oceanside, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday morning. Saturday, Friday night is at 7 p.m. and Saturday morning at 9.30. If you guys wanna come along, uh, be here by 7.30 so we can leave, so we can be out there by 9, 9.30. Uh, any more information, uh, please call Pastor Sandro. Uh, the beginning of, uh, at the end of next month, we're going to be having a revival with, uh, uh, not revival, but healing crusade, our own healing crusade with Pastor Tom Cunningham on August 28th. If you want to sign up for that, uh, call Pastor Sandro as well. And, um, I don't know if you guys caught many of the sermons from Prescott, but you know what? It, it was, it was filling. It, it was, it was life changing, you know? Um, I saw them live stream, and it was really good. I, I really liked it. Um, thinking about maybe going to start going to summer conference. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, um, that will be all of the announcements for now. Uh, if we can take our offering. Um, uh, there are several ways you can give. You can give online at the doorsb.com, or you can come and drop it off at the plate because uh, we can't pass it around today. Uh, but, yeah, um, you know, a lot of times we, uh, you know, in marathons or in running or life in general, we, uh, we have, uh, we get thirsty, right? And I don't know about you, but how would you like people to give you the water? Would you like to get water with an eyedropper? or a jug, you know? And that's, that's, that's the way sometimes people do the offering, you know? It's like, okay, well, you know, I have this left, so I'll just give it, you know, because it's what I have left. 
you know, or, or, you know, it's, oh, it's a donation, you know, but you know what? The Bible says that it will be measured what we give unto us. You know, uh, if we can look at uh, Luke 6, 38, uh, the Bible reads, um, give and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured out into you, into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You know, and so my question again is, what kind of giver are you? Are you an eyedropper or are you a jug? You know, because we know that when God gives, he, he's more than a jug. You know, he's a whale. You know, so... Why not, you know, try to be like God and give with all our heart, you know? And with that, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Father Lord, for your great mercy, for your love, for all that you do for us and all that you give us, Father God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us this week, Father God, for guiding us in your word and in your wisdom, Father Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, let's do a prayer. Uh, whoever has prayer uh, requests, please lift your hands. Uh, those online, uh, I, I don't have any any online uh, um, prayers, but uh, let's pray for our nation, our president, uh, our fire and rescue. Let's pray for the Prescott Conference. That was a great conference for the new works that are going out, out into the nation locally as well. Let's pray for uh, our pastor, Pastor Warner, Sister Mona, uh, Pastor Greg Mitchell, Prescott Congregation. Let's pray for Pastor Bruce and Dale Callahan. Uh, let's pray for Pastor Sandra that he's out ministering. Uh, uh, let's just pray. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for the opportunity of being here to worship you, to praise you. I thank you, Father God, for your wonderful grace, your mercy, and your love. I thank you, Father Lord, for all the things that you've given us. I thank you, Father Lord, for always being us, being here with us and guiding us in your word and in your wisdom, Father God. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would help us to understand your word and the ministry that you're about to bestow upon us, Father Lord. Father, I ask you that you would use pastor as your mouthpiece, Father Lord, to give us your, our daily word, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And without further ado, let's have Pastor... Uh, Irving, come up. Praise God. Thank you uh, for having us here today. Me and my wife and my daughter were uh, excited to be here with you. Um, Edwin, Pastor Sandro, just thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for all of your support. Um, we just, we, we got here a little bit, a little while ago, um, almost a year now, if you can believe it. And it's been, uh, it's gone really fast. <laughs> um, but we're getting, we're, we're getting used to it. We're getting up to the, the to the LA speed. And uh, we're excited for the things to come. We do have a, a church building. Um, it's on uh, Centinella and La Brea. Um, and uh, we're, we're working on it. We're doing the, the construction right now. Hopefully it looks nice like this. Uh, this building, it's, um, we're going to fit a good amount of people in it. And God's done all kinds of things just to, to hook us up in little ways. Like we got a bunch of chairs. Um, just God's just really moving for us. So we're, we're expecting. We're expecting really good things. We're expecting to uh, just to see God move for L.A. in, in general uh, here, here in Gardena and over in Inglewood. So, so we're excited, um, and I just want to thank uh, this church, uh, you guys here today, anybody watching online. Um, thank you for your support and just uh, for your friendship and, and uh, you being with us in Jesus. So um, this morning I want to minister a sermon um, out of uh, we're gonna we're gonna start in Philippians chapter one. Philippians chapter one, um, and we're gonna start at verse twelve. If you want to read read with me, if you have it, say amen. amen. 
Amen. Uh, so Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear that become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Let's pray really quick with me. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this people here, Lord God, for every precious soul that's here in this building, that's watching this online. God, I pray that you would minister, Lord God, that this would bring food to our souls, Lord God, that you would bring encouragement, that you would bring hope, that you would bring just your life and your blood onto this time, onto these people, Lord. I pray you minister in Jesus' name, we pray. So this scripture, it's um, Paul, he's writing to the Philippian church and he's in chains. He's he's in he's in jail. Okay, um, he he had gone through just like uh, just a series of of going to, to from this magistrate to this this uh, you know important person and and, and just kind of up the chain, like kind of moving through the ju judicial system. And so he's all the way up. He's uh, he's been taken to to the Washington D.C. of the time, Rome, and he has the uh, he's in chains. He's in prison there. In Rome um, and so he's writing and the church there knows that he's in prison okay the church knows that all the things that he's going through they see man this is the Apostle Paul the one that, that started so many churches the one that that supports and 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 so many churches look to him for for guidance and as they're as their like senior pastor right as the person that they look to and everything and they see him going through this really tough time, going through these, these things, they're like, why, why is this happening to him? Why is this happening to such a, like a, a good person, like a, a person that's, that because of him, I'm saved? And, and so a lot of times, we, we see that in our own lives. We see that uh, in times where, where we don't expect to go through something rough. Right? We don't expect to, to enter into a time where, like, you know, the Bible says everything happens in seasons. And so, so a lot of times after there's breakthrough, we expect a, a time of just fruitfulness, of just continued breakthrough. Right? We expect that. But a lot of times that's not how it is. A lot of times it's not how life plays out. I like to say hey, life just can't be easy. <laughs> right? I mean, here in L.A., it's just things just aren't easy sometimes. Right? It's just you get to a point you're like why why did this have to happen right why did this have to happen you look at uh look at all the examples in the bible you see uh the children of israel they get delivered from egypt okay they're on their way out they're dancing they're getting like blessed with all the bling bling and all the good stuff and and on their way out they're excited they're dancing they're glorifying god they are free from captivity free from chains right and they move forward, and they're, they're, they're going on the route. They're following Moses. They're following God, and they're just stuck at the Red Sea. Okay, so they're like, okay. So it'd be like uh, you and I going for a walk, and, um, and uh, our route, like we, we take a walk, and we, and, and we stop in front of uh, 405. We can't go across 405. We can't go across that. Okay, okay, so we're, so we're stuck here. Okay, and then they turn around, and who's behind them? But the Egyptians, right? Pharaoh changed his mind. God changed his mind and sent Pharaoh after, after the Israelites. And so the Israelites are like, what, "What's up with this? I'm supposed to be free, and here you are." And they actually complain to Moses, and they say, "Moses, we could have just died in Egypt. I wouldn't have had to walk this whole way. It would have been easier." And so, so he. So the Israelites go through this, their they're time, they're expected to be free, and here they are, and it looks like they're just going back to, to being in chains. They're just going to die here. This is just getting worse. And that's life. That's us. We get through a, a time of expectancy. We get the little breakthrough. We're like, all right, progress. But then there's nothing afterwards. <laughs> then there's, then maybe it just feels, it feels like nothing's happening, or maybe things happen and it gets even harder. It goes the opposite way of what we thought it was. And so when we look at it, when we look at life, very easily the question comes, and just naturally it comes to everyone, why is God putting me through this? 
why is God doing it like this? Why do I have these chains? I've been delivered. I'm set free. I'm saved. I'm set free of the chains of, of, of my sins of my past. But now I, I, I have these things holding me down again. I have or, or something else. Like it, it's not my sin, but, but why can't life just move forward? Why can't it just progress? And so like even we know that's the reality. We know that life comes with burdens. Even, even Jesus, he said, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Okay, we're good with that? We're good with rest? Then the next scripture, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And, I will, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I don't know about you, but my thought is that when I give up my, my chains of my past and my sin, and well, now I don't have a yoke. Now I'm free. That's, that's the thought, right? That's how I would do it in my perfect world. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, okay, you're delivered, and now you follow me and you take on my yoke, my burden. But Jesus said that it's light and it's easy. And so the Bible says, it says you're going to serve some kind of master. Yeah. Right? We're going to serve, serve some kind of master. We're either going to serve sin and, and the prince of sin, or we're going to serve God, the creator of the universe. And the thing is, God created us with a choice. He didn't create a bunch of robots. He didn't create us to... Uh, just he could have created us like like the animals. The animals do as they're supposed to. The animals serve as they're they're supposed to. They fill their role. They do what God gave them. They do their thing. But for us, for some reason, he gave us free will. He gave us a will, and so that will was a choice. And we all, each of us, have a choice. Either I serve. What my own flesh is, the sins that come and everything that comes from that, or I serve God, the one who created me, the one who wants a personal relationship with me. And so we look and we see this and we see these, this, this, it's, it's a burden. It's a, a burden that we choose to take onto our hearts, onto our souls. And what it is, is just a pledge to God. Like that song that we sang, I surrender, I surrender all to you. And that's just a choice that God has given us to take on that burden, to take on that yoke, because it's way better than what the other option is. Yeah. <laughs> because that is what we're created to have, is that relationship with God. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says, Then he said to all of them, this is Jesus, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whatever wants... Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is someone, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Chains and, and burdens is not the Sunday morning topic that we always want to hear. <laughs> it's not. I want to hear about God miraculously setting up lunch after this. You know, some fried chicken or, or you know, some, some I, I don't know if this taco place out here is very good, but like some good tacos or something. You know, that's what we want to hear about Sunday morning. Come on now. Right. Come on. Let me hear it. We know that. But that's not how life is a lot of times. It's not what it brings. And that's what we realize. We see that. And so in this scripture that we, we started out with in Philippians. We see Paul talking about those chains that God's now placed on him. The chains, they're, they're physical chains. But they seem to be holding, in, in, in some people's minds, those chains would be holding them back from the destiny that God wants them to do. He was supposed to go to Rome. He was supposed to keep, continue spreading the gospel. He still, got, he still got some steps to take. That's what he would choose. No one would choose these chains, but he said in, in verse 14, it says, and because of my chains, 
Most of the brothers and sisters have become more confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Can I ask you, what are you doing with the chains that God's put in your life? Those things, those burdens that you see in your life that you, this, isn't, this isn't optimal. But what is God doing with them through you? Because of my chains, Paul says. Yesterday, we are at a birthday party, okay? We are at a birthday party. Um, there's a, just a ton of kids running around, all kinds of fun stuff. It was kind of hot, so every time I just kind of sat close to the pool, and every time one of the kids got too rowdy and splashed it, it felt good kind of, you know. That, you know it, was, it was a benefit. <laughs> and, and so they had this little snow cone machine, all right? And, and so and I ended up kind of manning the snow cone machine for a little bit, and I was, you know, thinking, make a, make a couple snow cones, cool. I'll make a couple snow cones. It's kind of hot, ice, snow cones, cool. I, I'm game. That's a good job. That's better than the one standing by the grill in the sun and just baking, right? I would be a different color today if I chose the other job. It would be very red, and it wouldn't look good. I just go from red back to pale, so, yeah. So I'm standing there, I'm making snow cones, okay, a couple kids, and then a couple more come. And every time I catch up and I make a couple so I can walk away, and then a couple more come. And then, I, and then I'm like, hey, wait a minute, didn't you just get one like five minutes ago? Then this, this, I, I ended up making like 20-something snow cones. And, and yeah, and some of them I think were repeat customers. <laughs> Gosh. And some of them were adults. <laughs> and so what happened was I was putting work labor into these snow cones. It was so hard work. It was, it was, man, I'm just kidding. But I was putting labor into those snow cones. And because of my labor and because of me being chained to this snow cone machine and people keep on on coming and getting those snow cones, because of that and that labor that I did, the kids and the adults, the adult kids benefited from that labor, from that, that chain, from that time where I was, I was hooked up to that snow cone machine. Okay. What Paul says, because of my chains. What about, has this ever, ever happened to anybody? This happens to me. I, don't, I think I just have one of those faces that says, I'm gullible and just run me over and walk on my face or whatever. Like, so I'll open the door, right? I'll open the door for like maybe like one person or one family. And then all of a sudden, I'm, 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 just, I'm still waiting because there's still people walking through. And I'm like, my family is walking like far off. And I, I, I go, wait, I can't leave the door. I could just let go of it, but I'm like, man, I'm, I, I, I can't just, I can't just let go of the door. Did that ever hap- Has that ever happened to anybody? You're like, you're okay. I'm still holding the door. I'm still holding the door. The other day it happened, and and, and Clarissa's like, where were you? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was one person, and then it was twenty. I, I, I don't know. And so that's me. I'm chained to the door. I'm serving, and because of that, they all benefited walking through the door. Of course, it's a small thing, but it's just, I'm painting the picture here. In our, in our service and in the things that we do and, and how we handle what happens in life, it affects people. If you think about it, like one of the greatest examples I can think of, and, and this is something that um, all of us here, we, you, we know about or we know of, um, but maybe someone online, you don't, you don't know the whole story, but the, the church that, that out to um, he got sent out to start a church and he went to this uh, the city and it didn't happen. He got kicked out really quickly. Like they were like, they were not having it. We don't want your kind of church here. We don't want your kind of like person that's excited about Jesus and telling everybody like that's you know that's too much. You know, people don't always take it. And so he got sent back. And then I think it was on the way back, he got in a car accident. And so here's here's Pastor Warner. He's uh, just like we talked about, he's, he's going out, he's stepping for it, he's stepping in faith. And then all of a sudden, this huge, just huge roadblock, he breaks his back. 
He breaks his back and can no longer walk. He breaks his back and here he is. Here's this huge burden that I can't even comprehend. I can't even, I wouldn't even know what that would do like. But he has this and he, he, he breaks his back and he doesn't stop. He doesn't say, oh, my life's over. I'm not going to do it anything else with my life now. His back is broken. He's roaming around. But he continues on. And because he continues on, we're here today. Because he continues on, I'm saved. Through a church in, in Atlanta, Georgia, God sent, uh, God prepared and, and, and sent a church to Atlanta, Georgia. And because of that, I'm saved. Yeah, and that's Pastor Warren. That's how he handled the burdens that God placed on him. Think about it. In our lives, a lot of things happen. A lot of hard things to deal with. But who's watching how we deal with it? Our kids, our family, our friends, our coworkers. They all see how we handle situations. They all see how we handle, man, he should be really mad right now. He should be like beating somebody up, but he, he, he calms himself. He wouldn't have used to calm himself. He would have used to just blown up and just ended up going to jail because he, he just beat up a bunch of people. That's, that was me. I, I, okay, I know I don't look like uh, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't some crazy person. I've actually never been in a fight in my life. Okay, that's, that's just how I look for it. But I used to have an anger issue. If I got mad, I was punching a hole in the wall. I never punched a person. I would probably hurt one of them on the wall. But I, I, I broke my hand one time punching the ground after I got the football. Like, that was me. That was how I handled anger before I got saved. But then I got saved, and now, now that I am saved and I have a relationship, a real relationship with God, people see how I handle those things. People see when we stub our toes and what words come out of our mouths. People see that. That's God, that's, that's people seeing the, the outcome of what's coming from our lives and the burdens that are coming, and they come in large and small. They come in really, you know, pretty easy things to handle every day, and they come in like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this one. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know how I'm going to make it out of this. But people are watching. So can I ask you this morning, like Paul says, because of my chains, these people are, are emboldened there. Because of my chains and how I'm handling what's going through my life, people are, are stepping forth in confidence. And that every single one of us here today, we have a sphere of influence. We have people around us that we see on a daily basis that they know, and you, you know, this guy's this guy's saved, like, how is he gonna handle this? Or this guy's saved, how is he gonna handle it, this, this girl that's just way too nice, right? Or this guy saved, uh, how is he going to, is he, is he going to help out somebody that needs help? Somebody in need. A lot of Christianity, a lot of times, and this is, this is where people kind of stumble on Christianity, is, is they'll see people not necessarily living out what they expect of a Christian. Let me be honest. A lot of times people see what they would call a hypocrite. They would call somebody like, he says he's a Christian. Like he says he goes to church every Sunday. He says that. Or she says that or whatever. But they don't act like it. Right? That happens a lot of times. And they see people that claim to be Christians. But they're not living out what God says is the second most important commandment. The Pharisees, excuse me. The Pharisees asked Jesus, they said, what are the most important, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says that you, let me find the scripture here. It's better to read the scripture. Okay, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Okay, number one, love God. Easy, right? With everything you've got, love God. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. 
And this is all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Christianity, guys. Simple. Because of my chains, other people can be encouraged in Christ. Because of my chains, people can see what it means to actually be a Christian, to have a relationship with God. Another example of this, and how important it is that Christianity is not just an enclosed thing where I, I'm living for God and I'm going to stay saved and I'm just going to kind of seclude back into my little Christian hole and I'm going to hide in here and it's going to be all good. I'm just going to survive. I'm just going to hunker down. That's not what Christianity is based on the Bible. Another example of that is Peter. After Peter denied Jesus, Jesus was hanging up on the cross dying. And everybody was scared that was around Jesus. Everybody was scared, right? Because Jesus just got crucified in the worst way that we could even possibly imagine dying. And everybody was scared, including Peter. And so Peter was just standing around a fire. He's just, he's just in shock, I'm sure. I mean, can't even imagine. And this girl comes up, I saw you, Jesus. He said, no, that wasn't me. And he said, that wasn't me. That definitely wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. Deny. Happens again. The girl says, I know, I, 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 I saw you deny. And then third time, and he said, Blank, I don't know that man. Deny. And a few days later, after Jesus rose again, Jesus went to Peter. And he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, You know God. You know that I love you. Peter, do you love me? A second time. You know God. A third time. Peter, do you love me? He says, feed, and Peter says, you know I love you. And what did he say? Jesus says, feed my sheep. Peter, son and daughter, all of us, you love God? Then we have to feed his people. Then we have to care, then we have to love the people that are around us. Amen. That's our calling. And so I just want to encourage all of us this morning, those here, those watching online, that no matter what comes, it's worth it. No matter what comes in our Christian lives, it's worth it. Like Paul said, to live is Christ. I'm going to live for Christ and to die is gain. Because why is to die is gain? Just because after this, after I go through whatever life can go out to me right now, I get to go to heaven. Amen. That's right. We all get to go to heaven. It's like saying, hey, listen, if I, you're going to be hungry all day today. You're not going to eat all day. You're not going to have any money. You can't do, like, you're not going to have any of that. Man, that's going to be, you know, that's kind of sad. Because like we talked about earlier, we all like food. But tomorrow, I'm going to give you like a billion dollars. What would we say? All right, cool. I'll fast for like a week for a billion dollars. You know, that's no problem. That's our lives. There's a promise of eternity. And that's forever. In a place called heaven. In a place that we can't even imagine how awesome it is in a place where we have a relationship with God that's so close that we can't even imagine. We're, every question answered, no more pain, no more sorrow, that's tomorrow. And so Paul can stand the chains of today because of the promise of tomorrow. And I want to encourage all of us, and those that are watching, there's nothing that we can't handle for what's to come. Nothing that's not worth the price. And what we got coming on. Amen. Amen. And God will give us the strength to handle, and we know no matter what, we're on the winning team. Amen. Yes, amen. Right. amen. We're going to win. Yes. And nothing else about it, we're going to win. Okay? So there's nothing to worry about, there's nothing to fret. We're walking out of this place this morning. If you went home watching, you can walk away in victory. Amen. amen. Let's take a moment, every head bowed and every eye closed. Out of respect to God. I'm going to take a moment to pray. After the children of Israel, they cried out to Moses. They said, Moses, Moses, why would you take us here and kill us? <laughs> and he says, he turns to them and he says, stand and see the victory that God's going to give. And then they're delivered miraculously from the Egyptians. Their enemies are wiped away, never to be seen again. 
stand and see the victory that God has for you. Today, every single one of us are in need of help. Every single one of us have a problem called sin. And the only way for that to be washed away, the only way for that to be fixed, is through the sacrifice and the blood that Jesus shed for you and I. There's nothing else that can take its place. There's nothing else that can get us to a relationship with God other than the blood of Jesus. And it takes action from you and I to accept it. What good is a Christmas gift if you don't open it? What good is Jesus' blood going to do for you unless you accept it and you give him your life? If there's anybody here this morning Say, God, I need you in my heart. I need a relationship with you. I need your blood to wash my sins away. Just lift your hand. God sees it. If there's anybody online, you're saying, Josh, that's me. I know I need Jesus. I know I need help, but I don't know how to get it. The Bible says anyone who calls upon Jesus' name will be set free and delivered from the past that they have, from the sin that hold them down, from the chains that you cannot break on your own. He says all you have to do is cry out. Just repeat this prayer after me. If you're watching this online, if you're here this morning, say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you died on the cross for my sin. Wash me clean, set me free, and help me to live a victorious life in you. I trust in you, I love you, and I know that you're the Son of God. In Jesus' name. Let's take a moment this morning. We're just going to pray. We're going to take some, take some time. Because yeah, us that are here, we're just going to pray. We're going to pray, God. I know I see these problems. I know I see these chains. But Lord, what are you going to do with them? God is in control of everything. Literally everything. And he's okay with what you're going to do. Because he can get you through it. And so let's take some time. Let's pray. Let's just devote ourselves to what God's going to do because of my chains. Okay, let's pray. Out tonight to come back to, to service 6 30. Remember, we're having a movie night, tasty bite. Uh, bring a date, bring something, dinner and a movie. That's right. <laughs> dinner and a movie. Uh, let's sing that song, Lift Jesus Higher, and we'll count ourselves this. Lift, Lift Jesus Higher, Lift Jesus Higher, Lift it up for the world. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift 